back to Cindy's library. I am Cindy. And yes, I am uh, filming from a slightly different location. Long story short, uh, I can now put my own computer back on my own desk instead of having my work computer on my desk. So that is great as far as that goes. As for what we are going to talk about today, we are going to finish up uh, what I read for October, Victober. So, did pretty good for the first half of the month. I filled some challenges. Oh, let's see here. Oh. Oh, female main character, uh, Ruth, which I read for the second half of the month, country and or city, country, Jane Eyre, a city, uh, can do Mary Barton. Uh, Sensation novel will count Sylvia's Lovers, popular Victorian novel, Adam Bede. And I listened to both Mary Barton and Adam Bede, so that counts for that one. The only thing I did not do was read Gothic, well, finish Gothic Tales by Elizabeth Gaskell. I am sorry. But everything I read this month was quite heavy, both not in ter only in terms of literature quality, which you can expect from many Victorians, but also in terms of mood and plot. So I can't get myself to finish it. I'll finish it Sunday, no doubt, no doubt. But in the meantime, what I did finish Oh, for the second half of the month specifically, I read Ruth by Elizabeth Gaskell. Oh, poor Ruth. She starts out with a hard life. She loses her mother at 12, father at about 16, and her guardian uh, gets her an apprenticeship with a dressmaker. Uh, a rich young man flirts with her and she gets in trouble and so the young man convinces her to go with him and things end up badly as far as that goes. And sadly Ruth ends up all by herself. Fortunately, it's a kind young man, um, a dissenting minister actually, I believe, of some sort, who is kind to Ruth and helps her. But, well, let's just say that things are very complicated for Ruth. And as time goes on, in some ways they become even more complicated. So, very sad story. Good story, but sad story. Do you like the discussions of that instead of condemning and shunning sinners, trying to help them back to the path of virtue and things along those lines? Because that is what people in trouble generally need the most. We could definitely see some more of that today, I think. So, Ruth by Elizabeth Gaskell. The next up was Sylvia's Lovers by Elizabeth Gaskell. And so, this is set in 1970 in the seaside town of Monkshaven, which I guess was based on Whitby, the northeast coast of England. And the date and location is important because this is 
when the French Revolution is going on and we are getting into the Napoleonic era. And Britain is desperate for sailors. So they send gangs into towns, especially seaside towns where there's likely to be sailors to impress sailors for the Navy. And this is important because, well, we've got our heroine, Sylvia. Now she doesn't live in the town proper. She lives more in the country. And there is a guy in town. He is an apprentice. Uh, he's an apprentice to the one of the main shop owners there, and he's learning that trade. And he's absolutely head over heels with Sylvia. Well, head over heels in love with Sylvia. Sadly, Sylvia does not return his feelings in the same way. I mean, she wouldn't mind thinking of him as a brother, but more than that, at least at the point where the story begins, she is not interested in. And she is even less interested in that when uh, there's a sailor, uh, harpooner, Charlie Kinraid. He's a cousin of Sylvia's friend, Molly, or some such thing. Yeah, I think he's a cousin. Anyway, Sylvia meets Charlie. And he is brave and dashing as a soldier and handsome, everything that quiet, serious Philip is not. And Sylvia falls head and heels in love for Charlie. And Charlie likes Sylvia. Although, to be fair, there's a bit of a question about how serious Charlie is. Anyway, so you've got these three in love, in a love triangle, and how it will end. Well, everything comes to a head one day. Oh, and there's also, I think her name is Hester. She works in the shop doing the women type items, the same shop that Philip works at. And she loves Philip. But has he noticed her? Of course not. So we've got all of these entanglements between these four characters. And one day, something happens, and everything comes to a head. And Decisions are made that come back to haunt everyone. And then more decisions are made that come back to haunt everyone. It's a very, very sad story. Very good, but very sad again. So, I would say, so probably, a uh, Elizabeth Gaskell's main novels are probably the saddest ones overall. So after that, I needed a tonic of something extremely different. So I read The Cat Who Saves books by Sosuke Natsukawa and Let's see, it was translated by Louise Hill Kawai. So this is the story of Rintaro Nasuki. And Rintaro-san, he loves books. He, his parents are both dead. Uh, probably around the age of eight or ten, something like that. And so he's lived with his grandfather ever since then, his grandfather who owns a used bookshop. Sadly, 
when he's about 16 or 17, his grandfather dies. And so uh, Natsuki is left with this bookshop. And his aunt, who he's never met, thinks he should sell it and move in with her. He still has high school, but what does he really want to do with his life? That's a good question. And of course, this talking cat shows up who asks him to help him to save books. And this is where this book really gets interesting because they go basically into a labyrinth to do three different places and have to save books from each of them. And then there's a final one after that. But each of them takes a look at reading in the modern world. For, exa for example, in the first place, the guy is only interested in page count and word count and how many books he has read and never rereads anything and how much he actually appreciates what he reads is a very, very good question. So, that is the first guy that they save books from. In many ways, it's, this is a very philosophical book about books and about reading. Very interesting discussion also about how reading has changed in the modern world. And the fact of the matter is, some of us just can't do without reading. So, so it's basically a love letter to books and to reading, and I greatly enjoyed it. It was exactly what I needed to read after reading so many heavy Victorian novels. So... That is that, and I believe that is what I read for the second half of Victober. So, I hope your Victober went as well. Hope you succeeded in reading everything that you wanted to. Glad that with the exception of the group read, I was able to get done the main things that I wanted to focus on. So. I'll call that close enough to a win for my purposes. At least I enjoyed the whole process of reading Victorian literature, even if I did need to take a break from it. So I'll call it a win as far as enjoying it goes. So I'd love to hear how your Victober ended up. Feel free to leave comments and uh, tell me what you your favorite Victorian book that you read for Victober was, or if you didn't do Victober, just what your favorite book that you read for the month of October. I'd love to hear that too. Thank you so much for stopping by. I truly appreciate it. Until next time, I hope we all stay safe and healthy. And as always, happy reading.